Okay, I just received my new Dell Mini 10V. It's a refurbished netbook, direct from Dell Outlet. Comes with uh, Windows XP Service Pack 3 home version, and I'm going to Hackintosh it with Mac OS 10. I bought the new iPhone. Okay, and uh, this is the Ice Blue. And the new decal. It uh, comes with the XP uh, discs, the drivers, and all of that, which I will not be using. I'm going to be uh, putting the Apple uh, logo over the Dell logo that you see right now, and uh, it'll be my MacBook Mini. With Windows XP Service Pack 3. Here's my last. And now I've got, uh, I'm going to do the install with two USBs. Uh, one gig that'll be with the bootloader. Uh, this has the Dell EFI and a uh, ISO bootloader. Enables it to uh, boot right from the USB when you go into BIOS and set it up for USB Legacy. I'll also be using a 16 gig, which will have the... Uh, Mac OS 10.5.6 retail version image on it. This time I'm going to try it with the uh, that's the one in my right hand. Uh, the 10.5.6 is it has to be a retail version of the the uh, Mac OS 10 or it will not work. Now it's got power got two USBs on the left. It's also got a Kensington lock. On the right, uh, you'll see that there is also, or on the left also, there's an SD uh, card reader in the front right there. And on the right hand side, there's another USB. There's a line in and out. There's the uh, RGB for monitor out and then the uh, uh, Ethernet connection. So I'll plug this USB in and that'll be our image for the uh, for performing the uh, Mac OS 10 install. So we'll open it up and we'll get started. Power it on. You'll see in the lower left the power light comes on. That indicates there's power to it. And you've got to press F12 once it boots up. Okay, so we're gonna boot this up. We've got our. So you now you get the view of the screen here, and that's the uh, USB that has the uh, boot, and the one on the right has the OS 10 on it. Power it on. Press F12 once you see it. It look. It's looking for boot options, startup options, right there. F12, and then you're gonna select. It's whited out here, the USB, and then first goes to the uh, the drive on the thumb drive on the left, the flash drive on the left. It's loading the Sys Linux bootloader. That gives you the option. It asks you to press enter to start from a, a foreign OS. However, what you really want to do is press escape. You press escape and then you can choose which hard drive to choose from. 80 is an internal hard drive. 81 would be the external flash drive there on the right. So press 80 and then enter or return. 81, excuse me. And, this is and then what you really want to do here is press dash F, enter. And then you'll start the uh, loading of the OS. There it goes. And you're well on your way to get started to load the OS onto this hard drive. Now first we have to partition the hard drive. And uh, you'll once it boots up and you select a language, you'll choose utility from the menu bar. And uh, it'll bring you to the Disk Utility Program. Well, you have to select Disk Utility Program. Once you select Disk Utility Program, you select the hard drive. So here you would choose English. Now it gets started once you get the menu bar at the very top. Then you select Utilities. And this mouse. And then uh, Disk Utilities. 
the mouse is uh, doesn't have the drivers to it yet, so it's a little Here's bit jumpy. So is, forgive uh, me on the on my uh, ineptness with this mouse pad. So you select the uh, hard drive there at the top once the mouse cooperates, and then you go over to uh, and you go over to partition. You partition it and you choose. Um, a single partition there, name it. I have it Hackintosh hard drive. You click on the options button just below the partition and you select GUID, G U I D boot, instead of the master boot record, which it'll default to. And that'll allow you to boot OS 10 with an Intel based processor. Now select your Hackintosh hard drive continue and here you can do options uh, or customize it which I normally do I get rid of uh, excess printer drivers because uh, I only use HP dri uh, printers so I'll only load the HP drivers um, and you can also select foreign languages if you want them it just takes up extra space now this is a 160 gig hard drive so space isn't really that much of a premium but if I want to use this for doing photos and video and all of that, then yes, space is a premium. So here's the first boot. Um, right here, we've so we've and finished loading it, the, uh, the install. We've rebooted using the um, the, uh, the boot loader, and then we came up to this screen here. EFI. Now we have to install the Dell EFI extensions. This is a little program for the Mini 9 that also works for the 10V since it's replacing the Mini 9. Uh, just select yes. I'm using version 1.1 and this seems to work best uh, for the 10V. I don't know why, but it just does. The new 1.2A5 doesn't work. Uh, it gives you a bad screen once you uh, load it and you're not using the boot. So this runs, it'll ask you to reboot, once you reboot, uh, it should have all of the uh, drivers except for the audio. I recommend you go to Dell, mydellmini.com, mydellmini.com, join the forums, and look under uh, Mac OS X uh, install for the 10V, and there's a guy, Anguish that uh, has a nice post and he's got some links there. Other links you might want to find are kernel.org for syslinux files and code.google.com for the Dell EFI. Thanks for watching.